Welcome. Today's going to take a look at something called oxidation states. Let's start by looking at these three images. What do they all have in common, whether it be rusting of iron, the operation of a battery, or a fire? They all involve the exchange of electrons in what we call redox reactions. In order to understand how these best work, we need to understand how the elements change their charges as they proceed. And this is called an oxidation state. We define an oxidation state as the apparent charge that a species gains if it gains all the electrons in a bond. Let's look at water for an example. We can look at the electronegativities of the two elements involved, oxygen and hydrogen. Oxygen has a bigger electronegativity, and as a result, it captures not only its own electrons, but hydrogens as well. And I've drawn a rectangle around those electrons. So it has eight electrons. Normally, from its position, oxygen should only possess six. As a result, it has two more than it normally should, and hence an oxidation state of minus two. Hydrogen, on the other hand, has lost its electron. It should normally have one, but as a result now, because it's lost it, it's developed a charge of plus one, or an oxidation state of plus one. Let's look at a couple other examples. So in the next one, I'm going to look at nitrogen triiodide, a somewhat explosive material. Again, I look at their electronegativities, and I can see that nitrogen wins the tug of war for electrons. So it's going to capture all of the electrons in the center, all eight. So it has eight electrons. From its position in the table, it should only have five, three more than normal. As a result, it's developed an oxidation state of minus three. The iodine, on the other hand, has six electrons. Normally, it should have seven, so it's one short, and as a result, has developed an oxidation state of plus one. Propane is my next example, and again, I look at their electronegativities. Carbons is slightly higher than hydrogens, so carbon should grab hydrogen's electrons. Here I've drawn a rectangle or a shape around its the electrons it's captured. We can see one of the problems, though, is that with the carbon, there's a tie. So as a result, it doesn't capture both electrons. It has to share it with the neighboring carbon. As a result, it has only seven electrons. It should normally have four, capturing only three electrons. As a result, its oxidation state is minus three. And similarly, the carbon on the other end of the molecule has a charge of minus three. The carbon in the middle, though, is somewhat different. It has six electrons, and it should normally have four. As a result, it's only captured two and has an oxidation state of minus two, different than the others. The hydrogens on the ends of the molecule, in fact everywhere, have lost their electron, and as a result, they develop an oxidation state of plus one. Now, rather than drawing these out all the time, it's probably more convenient if we just develop a set of rules that we can apply and save drawing the oxidation states or Lewis dot diagram all the time. So the first rule is the oxidation state for any element is zero. Secondly, if an element has a charge or a species has a charge, we say it has an oxidation state equal to that charge. Using our periodic table, anything in group one has a charge of plus one, anything in group two has a charge of plus two. Hydrogen has always got a plus one charge, unless it's with a metal. When it's with a metal, the metal donates its electron to the hydrogen. As a result, hydrogens are minus one with, with metals, like in this one, potassium hydride. Oxygen is almost always minus two. The only exception is when it's cooked up in a peroxide. For instance, my last example there, hydrogen peroxide. Halogens generally have a charge of minus one unless it's combined with a more electronegative element. And in my last example here, oxygen dichloride, oxygen is more electronegative than chlorine. And as a result, chlorine doesn't have that minus one charge. Perhaps the most powerful rule is the final one. If we take a look at our first example, hydrogen has a charge of plus one, chlorine minus one. If I add those together, I get a charge of zero and that's equal to the charge of the overall molecule. In my next example, water, two hydrogens and one oxygen. The total charge comes out to zero. In my final example, I don't know what the charge is for sulfur. It's not listed in my seven rules. So as a result, I let it be x. And then I set up an algebraic expression to solve for that x. And here, I come up with sulfur's charge or oxidation state 
being plus 6 in this example. Let's look at a few more uh, examples and see how these rules apply. First off, magnesium oxide. I can look at the rules. Rule number 3 gives me the magnesium is plus 2, and rule number 5 gives me the oxygen is minus 2. And also rule 7 says the total charge has to be 0. So as a result, magnesium must be plus 2, and oxygen must have a state of minus 2. Sodium hypochlorite. Again, I can consult the rules. I can see that sodium is plus 1, oxygen minus 2. I can't apply rule number 6, though, because chlorine is hooked up with oxygen, so its state is unknown. So again, I'm going to set up an algebraic expression and make it equal to 0, because this molecule doesn't have a charge. And as a result from that, I can find out that chlorine has a plus 1 oxidation state in this molecule. Sulfur dioxide. Again, sulfur is not listed in the table, but oxygen is, and the total charge on this molecule is zero. So again, solving the algebra, I get that sulfur must be plus four in this compound. Sodium thiosulfate ion has this particular formula. So in this one, again, I'll let it be x and minus two for the oxygen. And again, I'll set up an algebraic expression. Notice though it's two x in this case, because I have two sulfurs. And when I solve for x, I get the charge or oxidation state of the sulfur as being plus 2. I'm going to return to an example I did earlier. The oxidation state of carbon isn't in the rules, but hydrogen is. Hydrogen is usually plus 1, and the total charge on this molecule is 0. So I set up the algebraic expression. And when I solve, I get a fraction, negative 8 thirds. But if you recall back to this earlier example, carbons, the two carbons on the ends of the molecule, had an oxidation state of minus 3 each and the carbon in the middle had an oxidation state of minus two. Minus eight thirds is but a weighted average of those carbons. So here are a few for you to try on your own. I suggest you pause the video at this point and then come back later and see what the answers are. Congratulations if you got all those right.